Um, you know what? Get someone else to work with you. Get two or three people to work together and fill a box. There's so many needs here in the city. And imagine if we just go bless them. And the wonderful thing is when we go out to bless them, you are going to take the boxes and bless people. You will be blown away about what needs there are and our blessed people are by getting a box of goodies for Christmas. Amen? So don't forget that. And um, I also just, just want to share this morning that, um, uh, as, as you know, we don't take an offering during this lockdown and stuff, but there is a box at the back for your free will offerings. And it's so amazing that the more I'm speaking to people in the church, the more I'm hearing how blessed they've been and how God has blessed them. And it just shows our God's way above lockdown or the economy, um, if we honor him and obey him and do what he says, he just blesses us. Amen. And actually, the other night I sat in my bed and I said, God, I don't even feel I deserve the blessings that are coming. But it, it's just he just blesses and blesses and he's a good God. Amen. So let's give him a praise for that. Um, and, and this morning we've been doing the series on Revelation and um, Every time I minister on something in Revelation, I, I break away not from Revelation, but to give us what the Lord means to us as the church so that we have an understanding of it. And I believe that's what God's prompted my heart to do, not just to read it and preach it and teach it, but so that we understand it. Amen? And um, last week we looked at controlled, um, and you don't know it, know it, and we looked at Revelation 2.20. It's what we allow. He says, you allow the spirit of Jezebel. And um, a line is agreeing something that old King James says to tolerate. So if you allow something, you tolerate that thing in your life. And I want to say right now as Christians, there's some things we should not tolerate in our lives, and we see it in the Word. Amen. And then we sang the song Flawless, and we just saw how God sees us. And um, often the reason why we allow things in our lives we looked at is hurt, rejection, disappointment, not being accepted, and a host of other things. And, um, but we saw that God sees us without spot or blemish. Isn't that amazing? Hey? You know, and I get up in the morning, I think, God, <laughs> you know, a wretch like me, you see me spotless and blameless because of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Uh, it just, just encourages you to press in and become all um, he has for you. And uh, we saw in 1 John 1, 8, 9 that if we confess our sins, this is a scripture, like I said, I still sometimes battle to get my mind around. If we confess our sins, he's just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I mean, it's mind-blowing. You know, I spoke to someone, I think, yesterday afternoon, they said, you know, what Jesus did on the cross for us. I mean, it's amazing. He loved us while we were still sinners. Amen. That's the extent of his love. And like I said last week, um, we'll be looking at um, the Jezebel spirit uh, this morning. And, and I want to say, after really studying and researching and looking at it, uh, just the Jezebel spirit is going to most probably be the next two Sundays as well. Uh, because what happens, we need, in, as Christians, and this is what the Lord's laying on my heart, we need understanding of his word. Amen. Because then we can stand and we can be overcomers. And, um, and as I said, we were going to look at the, the Jezebel spirit. And uh, I, I want you to remember this first. There's a scripture in Ephesians. And um, Ephesians 6.12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. It's not the person we fight, amen? <laughs> it's the spirit in the person. And, and that's very important um, to understand when we look at this. Uh, first of all, as I minister over the next few weeks, don't look and say, hmm, that reminds me of so-and-so. Be careful, <laughs> because it might be you the other fingers are pointing back at. <laughs> and um, it, it's, it's a, 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 this scripture comes in the middle of us putting on our armor of God. So we put on our armor of God because we're fighting things in the spiritual realm. Amen. Not the person. You get some beautiful, wonderful Lovely people, but they've got a ho ho or two in them, but it, it doesn't disqualify them for who they are. Amen. All right. So, um, 
many people and pastors don't like talking about the Jezebel spirit. And um, it's a very clear indication why. Because one of the biggest characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel is to put fear in you like she did to Elijah. And um, so some people say, oh, I don't want to. I have one lady in our church who couldn't be here this morning, but she's moving. Um, uh, she said, I can't wait to hear this. Is. And I thought, that's a good response. Most people say, well, do you think you should be talking about that, you know, and demons? And yeah, yes, we should, because the Bible talks about it. Amen? And um, I, 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 I just want to say, I've, I've gone through a lot of teachings. I've got a lot of resources, a lot of research and material to prepare for the message. And I'm blessed that certain preachers are not afraid to share on this topic. Um, Pastor Robert Morris from Gateway Church. Gateway is a huge, huge church. Love his teaching. He's solid. He's sound. He's a lot like Jensen Franklin. Um, Pastor Jimmy Evans, who runs, him and his wife run a marriage course, uh, but he also talks about the spiritual realm. He is related to and works for Gateway. And um, man, this guy blessed me because out of my socks, because he doesn't just preach about it. He hits a religion that could cause major problems for him head on because the whole religion is based on control. The men control the women, the kids, they control everything. And he doesn't mince his words about it. And I thought, yes. And then there's uh, John Paul. I don't know if you've heard of John Paul. He's been on various TV shows and that. He's got a book called Unmasking the Jezebel Spirit. Pastor Jensen Franklin himself teaches about it. As a matter of fact, he's got a great teaching on the children of Jezebel, which I might, I feel I should show to you. And then many years ago, Pastor Rick Godwin, the international speaker, um, was at a seminar in Joburg where Tish and I were privileged to be, and he spoke about witchcraft in the church. And the one spirit he talks about is the Jezebel spirit. Because the Jezebel spirit is a spirit that manipulates, controls, and so on. We're going to look at it. Okay. So our scripture references during this time are going to be obviously Revelation 2, 18 to 26. And I'm also going to refer to the Old Testament 1 Kings 19 with Elijah. Now, I just want to clarify, first of all, <laughs> we have a New Testament Jezebel and an Old Testament Jezebel. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. But the Jezebel who confronted Elijah is not the same Jezebel in Revelation. Okay, but the spirit is the same, all right, and we will get to that. Now, when, as we looked last week in Revelation 2.20, when you allow something, it's actually you agree to it or you tolerate it or you give it permission to operate. Now, it's, it's, it's amazing that in the scripture in Revelation 2, and I'm going to read it, and we're just going to read all those verses and then I'll come back to it. From verse 18, as to the church in Thyatira, oh, I got tongue tied there, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> sounds like we were in Hawaii for a minute. Okay, so um, what it says that, that uh, what they must write to the church is now listen to this. These are the words of the Son of God. So this is the words of Jesus. Jesus is actually declaring this. Whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like. <laughs> uh, Bernice Bronze, can you imagine? Can't you wait to see Jesus? Can you imagine what he looks like? Hey. And he says this, I know your deeds. Now listen, this is all good. This is really so cool. I know your deeds, your love and your faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. What a great compliment from Christ. Amen. Hey, you're a great church. You've got this love of that. But um, as Susie says, she's getting used to this word, nevertheless. <laughs> Jesus says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I've given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on the bed of suffering, <clears throat> and I'll make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead, then all the churches will know that I'm he who searches hearts and minds, and I'll repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in the church, I'm not going to get tongue-tied again, <laughs> who do not hold to her teaching, 
and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets. Now listen what the Lord says. I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold fast unto what you have until I come. And this is quite something. The Lord's going to say, listen, there, there, there might be other things, but just this one burden, I'm putting you, get out of that situation, okay? And um, if you look at what is mentioned here, it is very similar to Acts 15. And in Acts 15, there's a bit of a squabble about the Jews wanting the Gentiles who receive Christ to become Jewish. Okay, you know the story, okay? And um, eventually, Paul writes, and him and Silas go, and they say to the Gentiles, listen, you don't have to become a Jew to receive Christ. Okay, we're all Gentiles here this morning, according to the word, okay? And um, we didn't have to become Jews to receive Christ. But they stipulate the same four things that the Lord stipulates in, in Revelation. And it also say, they also say to the Gentiles who have accepted Christ, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond and the following requirements. And it's as if you can get rid of this, you're going to be good and it's going to be fine. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. So those four things is what's mentioned in Revelation. Amen? And the reason they said that to the Gentiles was they didn't want the Gentiles to be disqualified from ministry or fellowshipping with the Jews. Because if they did that, it would have been offense to the Jews or they'd become Christians. Does that make sense? <laughs> so there's one point here you need to remember. Often people think when a Jewish person accepts Christ, he can't be Jewish anymore. No, no, he can still be Jewish and be a Christian. We didn't have to become Jews to become Christians. Amen? Are you with me? We should love the Jews, pray for the Jews, and reach out to them, but we don't do that. So this is exactly what the Lord is telling the church um, in Revelation. And please note, it is a spirit. And spirits are not confined to gender. Normally, Jezebel's spirit is referred to as only women have Jezebel's spirit. I've got good news for you this morning, bad news if it wasn't your theology, <laughs> that men too can have a Jezebel spirit, okay? And um, as I say, when, when, when you hear the message, don't think, ha oh, oh, ha, I think maybe that person. <laughs> I want you to get understanding. We're not judging each other, okay? All right. Breaking news. The Jezebel spirit can come to all of us. We're not exempt, okay? And at some time or another in our life, we would have all experienced operating under Jezebel spirit because we want control and we want this and that. And we, can, we could have experienced being under the control from someone else of a Jezebel spirit. So it, it's general and it's there. The spirit life is alive and active and wants to you know, destroy the church. So I want you to relax and enjoy this journey with me. Are you okay with that? <laughs> all right, just give me a smile. You're all looking too pensive here. Okay, all right. Let me tell you a little <laughs> story about the old Pentecostal um, stories when I got saved. Um, oh, my gosh, what's it, 48 years ago or something? Some of you weren't even born. <laughs> and um, in, in, in those Pentecostal days, we were taught about the Jezebel spirit and so if we saw a woman with big gold ring earrings and lipstick and saw, oh, she had a Jezebel spirit, you know? If she was a bit cocky and sort of quirky, oh, she had a Jezebel spirit. If she wore pants or jeans, she was definitely under a Jezebel spirit, okay? <laughs> and all of that is a load of nonsense. I nearly said something else, but just let's say nonsense. <laughs> it's all a load of nonsense, and, and it actually cause confessions over people that were so, so, so incorrect. Okay. Now, a Jezebel spirit you'll find in your business, in your workplace, in your home, and in the church. Jezebel spirit is not just restricted to the church. Okay. But in the church, the Jezebel spirit wants to control the church and destroy pastors. That's the bottom line of a Jezebel spirit. Okay, now let in verse twenty. Um, is it verse twenty? 
Ah, it is. It says here, um, you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. She calls herself a prophetess. And this is important to understand. A person operating under Jezebel's spirit will want a position of authority, even self-imposed as to be that person or that thing. And in the church, um, he or she will want to be in leadership or work close to the pastor and have that position. So in verse 21, it says, unless there's repentance, there'll be severe consequences. And um, the Lord says, I've given her time to repent of her immorality, but she's unwilling. You often find that a person with a Jezebel spirit is unwilling to repent. Uh, and we'll go into that why just now. So if you're aware that there's a Jezebel spirit, you've got to confront it, okay? Otherwise, you are going to be tolerating it in your life, in your home, in your business, and in the church. So the problem is that we don't like to confront the spiritual realm. We don't like to confront a Jezebel spirit, okay? In one of the resources I was listening to of Pastor Robert, <laughs> he was saying he prays before he does every service, which most pastors, I think, do, because if we don't rely on God, we've had it, okay? And um, he was going to preach on the Jezebel spirit, and then he felt prompted to rebuke the Jezebel spirit. And although knowing what he does, he just thought, oh, I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I can do that. And the Lord rebuked him. He said, why? I am greater than that spirit. And you can't rebuke that spirit. You can't even rebuke a puny spirit. But in my authority, my strength, and my power, you can rebuke that spirit. So it's nothing to be afraid of. Some of the things we, how we can identify um, a Jezebel spirit is someone you dread confronting, and then very possible that spirit is there. Um, you dread over-the-top reactions from that person, or the rejection you will get. That's a big one. I don't want to be rejected. So no matter which one applies, if it's there and you tolerate it, you're actually tolerating the Jezebel spirit. Now, I know what everybody else says. The church is about love. Amen. We love one another, we encourage one another, we, we want the world to be saved and all that. But there are things, church, let me tell you this morning, that you should not be tolerating. Can I have amen there? We should not. Okay, otherwise the devil gets in. A Jezebel spirit cannot operate without an Ahab. <laughs> A Jezebel spirit has to have someone they can control someone they can manipulate, someone that they can put fear into, okay? But I want to tell you, we always look at Ahab as weak. For those of you who've read the Old Testament, Ahab is not really that weak, but he's controlled by Jezebel. I want to ask you a question. Don't shout your answers out. <laughs> Which king of Israel conquered the most land during their reign? Most people say David, King David. Wrong. If you study the scriptures, it was Solomon who conquered the most land. Who was number two? Most people are going to say David. You're wrong again. <laughs> the other person who conquered just about as much as Solomon did was Ahab. Ahab conquered more than David. David was number three. Ahab was not a scaredy cat. Ahab was a warrior. He was a conqueror, okay? And this says that we can be a great conqueror in many things, but still be in bondage to a Jezebel spirit. Are you getting the picture? Ahab was this conqueror. He conquered. Uh, any other person who conquered more than him was Solomon. And yet he was still in bondage to the Jezebel spirit. Need to remember that. We're going to be coming back. Okay, so what is the spirit? Let me give you some causes. What causes a person to have a Jezebel spirit? A big one is rejection. People with rejection tend to want to now control and manipulate and dominate 
and, and, and be, have a position and, and so on and so on. If you look at Jezebel, Jezebel's father, now I don't know if any daughter would like this, Jezebel's father literally treated her like an object. He gave her to Ahab in marriage. She didn't want to marry Ahab. So that he could form an alliance for his nation. So she was a tool that he traded. I'll give you my daughter and we have an alliance. Can you imagine anybody taking their daughter and say, you're going to marry that person so I can have a better life and I can have peace. How does that daughter feel? She was rejected. She was angry. Don't forget, her father was both a king and a priest of Baal. And remember, though, the, the, the Baal believers would even sacrifice children. So she'd seen that happen. She might have sacrificed children. So there, there was a whole mixture of stuff in Jezebel. But when her father gave her away as an object, can you imagine the anger, the hurt, and the rejection? Okay? All right. Then, insecurity. People who are extremely insecure will operate in the Jezebel spirit. Pride. Pride people very easily can operate in the Jezebel spirit. And arrogance. And please, as I say, no finger pointing here. <laughs> um, this is just the introduction. Okay? <laughs> we'll get to the rest in the next few weeks. How does the spirit operate? Well, one of the big things that everybody says, and all the research shows that we see in the Bible, is manipulation. They are master manipulators. They'll manipulate you to do what you want, even if it's by sulking or tears or saying you've hurt me. or I'm up, that Somehow or another, they'll manipulate you to do what they want you to do. Intimidation. They are great at intimidating. And intimidation isn't always through force and anger. Intimidation can be through, oh, but you've upset me, and you know, tears and all this type of thing. Uh, and they intimidate you, and you feel guilty, and that's how they get you to do what you want to do. Lust. Uh, 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 a spirit like this, is, there's a spirit of lust attached to it. That's why the Lord talks about sexual immorality. And then deception. They master deceivers. And then lying. <laughs> They will tell lies just to get people to feel sorry for them, and then they can manipulate them, and then they can have their way. And then instilling fear. Do you remember how Jezebel, after Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal, she comes up and she threatens Elijah, and she puts fear in Elijah. Master thing. If you do this, well, that's going to happen, and you, you know, this type of thing. Now, we normally focus on Jezebel, and I'm going to focus on Elijah and Jezebel and the works of Jezebel over the next few weeks. And next week, I'm going to give you the effects of a Jezebel spirit. Well, that, that is something we really need to know. But I want to give you something that you might not have read in the Bible or you might not have seen it as a spirit of Jezebel. I don't know how many of you have heard of Herod the Great. <laughs> now, Herod the Great... And, and please, that's not the same Herod that Jesus stood in front of, okay? There are five Herods in the Bible, actually six, but the sixth one is actually the same as the fifth one, and I'll explain that later on in the series. But there are actually five Herods in the Bible. And Herod the Great, um, and, and, and he was called Herod the Great because he did great things. This, this man did great things. For example, he uh, built um, a scissor, What's wrong with me? Caesarea. Caesarea. <laughs> I'm tongue-tied this morning. Okay. And um, the reason he did that and he built that magnificent city and called it that was to win favor from Caesar. Okay. There was a city honoring Caesar. He built Masada. Masada was the greatest spa and lodge to be any five-star lodge anywhere in the world today. It would beat them. He built that to get people and to say, oh, he's wonderful and he's marvelous. Um, it, did you know that it was Herod the Great that built the sustaining wall to the temple, which is now the wailing wall where the Jews pray? He did that to get favor from the Jews. So he would do anything to get favor and be accepted and be liked so he could control. Okay. How do you recognize the spirit that was in Herod? Well, 
Herod was incredibly insecure. No one could be a threat to him. If anybody was a threat to him, he'd remove them. <laughs> nice fellow. <laughs> Aren't you glad he's not your friend? Amen. Okay. Uh, rejection, pride, arrogance, manipulation, and control, and he was jealous. Okay. Now, this is Herod the Great, that when the wise men came to him and said, we've found the Savior, we've seen the star, he said, oh, you must please tell me where it is, because then I want to worship too. That was a lie. Amen. We know he killed all the males in that area under two. He wanted to kill someone who could threaten his throne. He didn't want to know there was someone called King of the Jews, because he was Herod. And not only that, why did the Lord tell the wise men in that dream to go another way? Because he would have killed the wise men if they came back to him so that there would be no witnesses. <laughs> now, if you think, well, would he really have done that? Mm -hmm. If you study history, Herod banished all his wives, and he had many. He first banished his wives, and then he started killing them. If they became a threat to him, he would just, that's it, end of it. Actually, he killed his favorite wife, who he said long afterwards, I mean, nice guy, I regretted doing that. <laughs> and his favorite wife was Miriam. If you called Miriam here today, don't worry, relax, you're fine. Okay. But, but he actually married Miriam because she was a Jewess, and he wanted the alliance with the Jews. So he married her, but she became his favorite wife. And he actually had her killed because of a threat to him. Okay. He was always manipulating people to get them on his side through lies, through flatteries, through all of this type of stuff. As a matter of fact, and, 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 and this is, I mean, this, this, just, this just blew my mind. He was dying, and his favorite son was about to become king because he was going to die. His favorite son, five days before he died, he had them kill his son for the simple reason he was insecure and he must probably might have thought, well, my son might be a better king than I was or people might talk badly or whatever, or whatever. The, that's what the spirit, that's the extent it will go to. So when I want to spend time on the spirit, I trust you start realizing this morning why. And we're going to deal with how it affects the church as well. And, uh, you know, it's a funny thing. People think these things are outside the church. <laughs> Good news for you. They're inside the church as well. Amen. And this is why we need understanding and knowledge of this Jezebel spirit. Now, I hope that you've seen what happened to Herod and what happened to Ahab. It can happen to anybody, anywhere, in any position, in any walk of life. Amen? And we need to be aware of it, number one, that we don't perhaps operate in a spirit like that. And number two, we're not being controlled by someone who has that spirit. You, you, you see, um, I'm going to share some things later, but um, I used to get like a spiritual anger in me if I saw people who were trying to manipulate the church and us as pastors. But the Lord had to deal with me and he had to say, uh, that, that, that's my portion to deal with. And he had to make me aware of having discernment if it is a Jezebel spirit and how to take authority over it and how to release it and cut myself off from the control because the control does exist there. And I'm going to share testimony of Neville Norton that he shared in this church as well. So when I got to that, there was just a freedom in my life. <laughs> there was just this release that that, that burden was gone. And that, that's what I want us as a church to have. I want us to walk in that and be blessed about that. Um, and just to close the introduction off, how many of you, <laughs> listen, when I heard this, I listened to it about 10 times, and I went to read the word and check it out. How many, and I've preached this, so I repented of what I preached. How many of you believe that David and Jonathan had one of the best covenants that you could find? 
great friends, blood brothers, hmm? there to protect each other. Can I tell you something? Jonathan had a Jezebel spirit. Because if you study those covenants, everything was in his favor. You will protect me. You will do this. If you become king, I will be number two uh, right next to you. And, and everything actually that Jonathan was saying, the five times that, out of the five times that King Saul couldn't find David, three of the times that King Saul found David was through who? Jonathan was. Jonathan was the only one who knew where David was. And that is why when David calls for Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, says, uh, he comes and he was crippled at birth. At one of the birth, when, when the nurse was fleeing with him, he fell down the stairs and he was crippled. And he falls before King David because he knew anybody of the previous king's family would be killed by the other king. But David was honored by God because David upheld his side of the covenant. And he called for Jonathan's son. And when Jonathan's son uh, threw himself down on the floor and said, what do you want with a dead dog like me and whatever? And, and uh, what did David do? David kept his side of the covenant and said, rise, I'm going to restore the land of your fathers. I'm going to give everything back to you. I'm going to get people to work. That's why God honored David so much. And if we read that somehow, and I'm not saying this is it, please don't, don't take this as gospel. But as I studied this and looked at it, I thought maybe that's why Jonathan died with Saul because God was cutting that control from David's life. So, you know, I've preached what a wonderful <laughs> covenant David and Jonathan had. And actually in the Psalms, and I'll show this to you next week, in the Psalms, David said, my very best friend, my friend betrayed me and came up against me. So, you know, this is why I want to minister on this and get an understanding in our hearts so that we're not deceived, amen, and that we know how to overcome it, amen? Are you all happy with that? Did you get something this morning? Okay, well, I'm, I'm hoping over the next two, but it might be the next three Sundays, because I really want us to get an understanding of this and get it in our hearts and... Um, be able to live that victorious life and be able to not tolerate this stuff. Because the sad thing that I've seen in my life is that when, and, and in my own life, when I've tolerated that spirit, my life gets messed up. And I don't believe we should have our lives messed up in Christ because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are overcomers in Christ, but we need this understanding. Amen. So put your seats belt on. We're going to fly high the next three weeks, and I know you're going to be blessed. Let's pray. Let's just stand and pray. Can we just stand before the Lord? Let's just stand. And, and, and just by the way, at the end of the series, I'll be leading us in a prayer um, where you can be released from a controlling spirit and where you can, um, if, if it's in you, you, you can also be released from it, but you can be released from the control of it. And that we'll do at the end because I want you to have the understanding of it. Okay. Father, we stand before you with so much gratitude <laughs> that you've given us your word. And as David said in the Psalms, your word truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And we pray as we share this word, Lord, there'll be enlightenment and we'll be able to walk in victory and not under control and depressed and dejected and feel we want to quit. And all those things happen when there's the Spirit controlling us. And Lord, we want to walk in that victory. And we thank you for your word. Thank you for discernment of your word. Thank you for blessing us with the knowledge of your word. And I just pray, Lord, that each one here will get discernment of those spirits. Um, and Father, in the name of Jesus... I declare us free from those controlling spirits. Um, we have the authority to command them to go. And Lord, we have the authority to command those who are controlling to cease that in our lives so that we can live a victorious life. And I just pray from today that we'll have discernment. We'll be rejoicing about what you did for us on that cross to give us the liberty and freedom that we truly have in Christ Jesus. And so we just praise you and we worship you this morning. I pray your blessing on everyone. We ask that this rain will continue with your favor in Jesus' name and that everybody, whether it's on live streaming or here, that will go away blessed and rejoicing 
knowing that you have plans for us. And those plans are to prosper us, not to harm us, but to give us hope in the future. What a blessing for us. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. And let's just give the Lord a praise offering for that. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we will have coffee and tea this week. We couldn't have last week because we didn't have electricity. <laughs> so grab a cup and chat for a bit. And uh, we're going to... Yeah. We're going to have tea and coffee and then communion. Can we do that? Hey, I, I stopped early so we could do it. Why be, why be traditional? So we actually are going to have a break. You're going to have coffee, grab a coffee, go to the loo, say hello to someone, and then we're going to sit down because communion is going to be very special. It's going to be five minutes, but special. And then we're going to sing that amazing song again. Amen? So I'll see you in five minutes. Break tradition. Come on, get out of your tradition.